Hello YouTube students, my name is Vincent and today I want to take a look at sketching a graph of f of x equals cosine x and f of x equals sine x on the interval from x equals 0 to 2 pi. Now to graph these two functions the main tool we're going to need is the unit circle. In particular we need to be able to convert from what we call rectangular or Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates. So what that means is if we isolate some point x, y on the unit circle, typically how do we get there using rectangular coordinates? We start at the origin, we go a horizontal distance of x, and we go a vertical distance of y. But what happens when we go to this point? If we were to connect the point x, y to the origin, we would have a right triangle. And let's go ahead and look at this angle here. We're going to call this angle theta. So now what can we say about angle theta? Well, this is where what we're going to need, definitions of trigonometric functions. If we are looking at, let's say, cosine of angle theta, we have that cosine of angle theta is equal to the adjacent side of this right triangle divided by the hypotenuse. But the hypotenuse in this case is going to be 1 because we're on the unit circle, and this is simply a radius. Remember, the unit circle is centered at the origin, and it has a radius of 1. So adjacent to angle theta is x divided by the hypotenuse 1, but x divided by 1 is just x. And next we could also look at sine of angle theta. And we have that the sine of angle theta. Once again, we have that sine is equal to the ratio of the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. So we have opposite of angle theta is y divided by the hypotenuse 1. So now what this just did for us, instead of looking at points now in terms of x, y, using this unit circle, now we can look at them in terms of cosine theta, sine theta. That's going to be the goal. I'll go ahead and write this a little bit bigger. So we're going to be looking at x, y as cosine theta and sine theta. So the points that are of most interest to us, keeping in mind we're on the unit circle, if we're centered at the origin, we could isolate the point 1, 0. Keeping in mind this radius is 1, so we're going to the right 1 and up 0. We're looking at this point here. This would be the point 0, 1. Or we could go from the origin to the left to the point negative 1, 0. Or we could start at the origin and go straight down to 0, negative 1. So now the goal here is going to be to express this point in terms of cosine theta, sine theta. So for instance, if we're looking at, let's say, the point, we're looking at the point 1, 0. The way polar coordinates works, this point 1, 0 is associated to an angle of what? How much what angle theta are we spinning to get to the point 1, 0? Well, to get to x, y, we extended a radius of 1, and we spun an angle of theta. But if we're at the point 1, 0, we extend 1, and we spin 0 degrees, or 0 radians. So we're looking at cosine of 0, sine of 0. And now the goal is going to be to construct a table of points using this relationship here. So now let's look at an alternate set of points. Let's look at the next point, 0, 1. Oh, and keep in mind, this is where radians is going to come in. We need to be able to convert from radians to degrees to do this conversion chart here. So from, from going from the point 1, 0 to 0, 1, what is our angle theta? We're starting here and we're spinning exactly 90 degrees to get there. But 90 degrees, what does that equal? This is also pi over 2 radians. So to get to the point 0, 1, we could go 0, 1, or we could extend out a radius of 1 and spin pi over 2 radians. So we're looking at the pair of points cosine pi over 2, sine pi over 2. Keeping in mind this conversion we derived right here, that we have x, y goes to cosine theta, sine theta on this unit circle. So next we can look at the point negative 1, 
zero. And how do we get to negative one zero? Well, we extend out a radius of one and we spin 180 degrees. We go halfway around the circle. But 180 degrees is also pi radians. So we're looking at cosine pi, sine pi. And now you can begin to see already that this blank Cartesian plane for both of these functions, the x values are starting to match some of the values we have listed here. So let's go ahead and continue. Now next we're looking at 0, negative 1. How do we get to the point 0, negative 1? What is our angle theta in this case? Well, we extend out 1 and we spin 270 degrees, which in radians is 3 pi over 2, which tells us that the point 0, negative 1, using this polar coordinates, corresponds to cosine of 3 pi over 2, sine of 3 pi over 2. And last, we'll go full circle. We'll go back to the point 1, 0. So when we go back to the point 1, 0, we're spinning a full 360 degrees, or 2 pi radians. Which tells us that 1, 0 corresponds to cosine 2 pi, sine 2 pi. So now what we could do is we could look at particular values of cosine and sine. For instance, we could look at cosine 0 equals, sine 0 equals. Well, cosine corresponds to the x-coordinate, and the x-coordinate, in this case, when we're looking at cosine of 0, is 1. And the y-coordinate, in this case, corresponding to sine, keeping in mind sine corresponds to y, sine of 0 corresponds to this 0 here. So now we look at the next point, cosine of pi over 2. What is the corresponding x-coordinate? The corresponding x-coordinate for cosine pi over 2 is x equals 0. And now we're looking at sine of pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2 corresponds to this y-coordinate, which in this case is equal to 1. So now what this allows us to do is instead of looking at these as a rectangular pair of coordinates, we can look at them in terms of polar coordinates, cosine theta, sine theta, and this helps us evaluate particular values of cosine and sine at those particular angles. So now we'll look at the next one. We have cosine of pi, sine of pi. But what is the corresponding x-coordinate for cosine pi? Keeping in mind cosine corresponds to x, cosine of pi is equal to negative 1. Sine of pi corresponds to the y-coordinate in this case, so it, sine of pi is equal to zero. Now we continue down the list. We have cosine of 3 pi divided by 2, sine of 3 pi divided by 2. And now cosine of 3 pi over 2 corresponds to zero. Sine of 3 pi over 2 corresponds to negative 1. And now we look at the last point. We're looking at cosine of... 2 pi, and we're also looking at sine of 2 pi. And now keep in mind, cosine 2 pi corresponds to the x-coordinate, which in this case is 1, which makes sense because if we go 2 pi radians, we're going right back to the starting point, which means 0 degrees and 360 should correspond to coterminal angles, and cosine 0 equals cosine 2 pi, and also sine 2 pi equals 0. So sine 2 pi equals sine 0 as well. So now that we have these points, keeping in mind, we need, we need to know the general shape of sine and cosine. I think most people can handle the fact that sine and cosine take on this sinusoidal shape. It's like a wave motion. But this method helps us figure out the particular values. We're looking almost for like critical points along the way. So we can, like, we can plot points along the way, and we'll assume that it takes this general sinusoidal shape when we sketch it. So let's go ahead and we'll start with cosine. Cosine of 0 equals 1. So we're going over 0 and we're going up 1. So let's go ahead and sketch this a little bit neater. We're looking at, this would be the axis for 1, so we're going over 0, we're going up 1. Then we're going cosine pi over 2 equals 0. So we're going over pi over 2 and up 0. Cosine of pi is negative 1, so we're going over pi and then down to negative 1. Cosine 3 pi over 2 equals 0, so we're going to go over 3 pi over 2 and up to 0. And finally, cosine of 2 pi 
we're going to go over 2 pi and back up to positive 1. So now when we sketch this, we need to assume this general sinusoidal shape. We're going to start here, and we're going to connect the dots, keeping this shape in mind. So if we're decreasing, we're going to construct the wave looping downwards. Now we're going to switch going upwards, and we're going to finish at 2 pi there like this. So cos f of x equals cosine of x in the interval x equals 0 to 2 pi looks something like this. Now we go ahead and we take care of f of x equals sine of x. We'll do this in a different color. So we're looking at sine of 0 equals 0. So we go over 0 and up 0. We're starting at the origin. Sine of pi over 2 equals 1. So we're going over pi over 2 and up to the point 1 here on the f of x or the y-axis. Sine of pi equals 0. So we're going to go over pi and up 0. Next we're looking at sine of 3 pi over 2 equals negative 1. So we're going to go over 3 pi over 2 and down to negative 1. And then finally when we go to sine of 2 pi we're going to be right back at 0. So we're going over 2 pi and up 0. So if we can, if we sketch this graph of sine x, we're keeping in mind it takes on this general sinusoidal shape. We're going to start at the origin and we're going to construct this wave going upwards looping downwards and back to the origin. And you'll notice here cosine of x in some sense let's say it sections off this part of the general wave whereas let's say sine of x it starts at the origin so we would section off let's say this point here to this point here. Noticing how it takes this shape and cosine takes off that this part of the wave here.